All right, hello, wine drinking people. We are back. And uh, just one supplier in the store yesterday, Monday, usually not a very busy day, but uh, one great one, man. And to have someone like Pierre Antoine Ravani in the store, what a character this man is. You know, he started collecting wine when he was 13 years old. I mean, most people aren't thinking about collecting wine at age 13. Well, you're not even legally old enough to drink it. But I guess when you got parents that are wine nuts that sit at the table and blind taste each other every night, uh, you know, you kind of get interested in this. I just hope that my kids turn out like Pierre and uh, they start collecting wine in their early teens. So I've already got a bunch of wine set aside from them from their birth years. So they're already collecting wine at age six and seven. But I love the stories that uh, Pierre's got. And uh, the one story where he says, you know, he was in love with port when he was young. Of course, you know, you have a taste for sweet things. So he went down to MacArthur's Beverage to purchase some cases of 1966 at age 13. They sold this man cases of port. So, you know, I guess they probably thought they were for his father. You know, what 13-year-old drinks port? Vintage port at that, not just your average everyday stuff. But uh, Pierre also worked for Robert Parker, I think, for nearly a decade as, uh, well, one of his uh, writers. And he covered Burgundy at that time, one of his loves. And uh, he has since uh, found someone to finance the purchase of Ramoisinet. And he is running that house, been running that for the last few years. And Ramoisinet is a negotiant that has, well, you know, a good name in Burgundy, but some of the older wines, some people questioned if those were the actual wines on the label in the bottle. And, uh, you know, a lot of the old stuff, you know, in really good shape. I purchased some 1969 wines direct from the domain. That's my birth year. And uh, we opened them up this year, my birthday. They were fabulous. Every single one we opened, including the village Von Ramene. Fabulous. But hey, Von Ramene is a village wine at another level. Probably my favorite village wine next to Chambon Moussini. Um, and the Von Ramene from, uh, that we had with uh, Mr. Avani was just fabulous from 08 again. We have the, a little bit of 07 left on the shelf. We even got some Magnums of Ramoisinet Marache. Uh, Montrachet, so it must be from the Polini side. I believe it's Le Montrachet if it's from the Chausson Mon side or one or the other. But for under 500 bucks, are you kidding me? For a magnum of Montrachet? And we just opened this up recently, actually when Alex Gamble was in town, and the bottle was just fabulous. And uh, they've got wonderful fills, just like the 69s did. But hey, let's talk about the current releases that Pierre brought by. And uh, we started out with a little Pernan Virgilesis. Uh, and uh, this is the area, well, it's on the other side of the hill of Courton, south of uh, Chasson Montrachet, and um, just beautiful and uh, some of the, the, the better um, values coming out of village wine in whites coming from this region here. So lightly toasted oak spice, vanilla bean, a little bit of creme brulee, nuance, fresh mineral, limestone, very complex bouquet nestled in the western slope of Courton, uh, east-facing vineyard, um, very high up on the hill, you notice the minerality in this wine distinctly, the limestone um, undersoil that they have there, lemon and green apple fruit on the tongue, but the focus is that pronounced minerality in this wine. Really love, lovely freshness and lovely uh, citrus coming through on the finish. Uh, very long and uh, for $34.50, man, an outstanding bottle, uh, bottle of Village White Burgundy. Next up, we had the Pelini Montrachet Le Perriere, and this is a uh, premier cru. And, uh, you know, only about 11, 10% of all the vineyards in Burgundy are premier cru, and like 1% Grand Cru. Just to give you an idea how small the proportion of vineyards in Burgundy is in Grand Cru and premier cru. So very tiny. And uh, this is one of my favorite Polini sites. A little warmer temperatures here in this vineyard. A good amount of clay in the soil, so that helps to hold in the heat and moisture there. Uh, 2008 was a good vintage for whites because of the vibrant acidity. And uh, this is one of the things I notice in both of these wines. That leads into a long finish and also helps the wine to age. This wine has a rich, ripe bouquet of green apple and pear-like fruit, a good amount of spice, minerality, very complex bouquet there. Lovely focus, focus and richness on the tongue with a full array of that wet stone and mineral kind of fruit, kind of a, a, a laced fruit coming through on the finish with bright acidity and lightly toasted oak spice, lemon zest on the finish. Most excellent juice, and hey, for $88.50, you should get a near perfect bottle of Chardonnay, well, for $500, rather. Anyways, we've got uh, the Nuit Saint-Georges, which, uh, you know, Nuit Saint-Georges tend to be pretty big, even the village wines. 
Uh, this 07, though, was a little bit lighter than the Von Romanet, um, and it should have been. I mean, that's the order we tasted them in. But uh, Nuit St. George sometimes can be a little bigger. Maybe it had something to do with the vintage here, but fresh earth brown spice and some nice black cherry fruit showing there with some pretty floral nuance on the nose. Uh, smooth and rounded wine on the palate with... Uh, Pretty silky tannins, and typical of 07, drinking fairly nice right now. Like I said before, these are not blockbuster wines, these 07s. They're going to be good for, you know, kind of short-term early drinking here. And at $50, maybe I was just wanting a little bit more from this wine. But the Von Ramenet from them, just outstanding. Lovely nuance and spice, fresh flowers. Very pretty with that red cherry, raspberry fruit showing. Hits some allspice. Uh, some nice acidity and stuffing here, a bit more uh, bigger in size than the 07. Uh, really nice spice showing on the finish, and uh, an excellent bottle of Village Von Romanet here. And for a few dollars more, that's where I'm putting my money here, as opposed to the Nuit St. George. But hey, both really nice wines. Everything really good in this portfolio today. As you can see, Mr. Pierre Antoine Ravani really knows what he's doing. A very passionate man uh, and very knowledgeable about uh, the, not only drinking wine, but the production of wine. And he said his pick, the Chambertin Clos de Bez. We're going to include the price on here, even though I didn't get to taste it. For those of you that want a killer bottle of wine, Pierre says that is what he is recommending. All right, folks, I'm your host, Andrew Lampassoni, signing off for the Wine Watch, saying remember, always drink the good stuff first.